Let's understand change and transformation. Change and transformation. When you're trying to apply a change some way, because you know just something that's working in your life. So you got what people call a problem. A problem can be consistent of uh, of different kind. It could be, let's say, uh, fear, or it could be uh, some kind of anxiety, or you can worry. And this is often displayed in different ways. Uh, if you have a phobia, for example, you have fear. And in NLP, for example, NLP. In NLP, they applied a pattern of the association, which means what they try to do is to remove you from the experience. So they, if you have an experience, a bad one, oh shit, uh, snakes, oh no. I hate snakes. They make me ooh, very afraid. Ooh, all that stuff, right? So instead of experience it, they removed you from the experience outside of it. So outside. And then they applied some kind of change pattern. And NLP developed over the years. So since it developed and progressed, it became a little bit faster to do the phobia cure or something. But basic patterns of NLP is either a switch pattern, switch pattern, that's the major patterns they use, or a negotiation pattern to do some kind of you know integration. And the thing here with NLP, how they do change and all of that, they're always working with the problem directly. Which means that they need to have some way of uh, making sure you're not associated or inside the memory or experience that you have a problem with. Now, that works really well when you have a phobia. When you have a phobia, that's easy because you fear and that happens. If you have anxiety or worry, that's a bit different because how do you experience that and how it's created is a little bit different than fear. And this is more common because the brain creates what we call a scenario based on past to future projection. So the brain takes something that happens in the past, the pattern that you've been a trauma example, a trauma. People say, oh, I have a trauma, a bad childhood memory, you know, and that's what it is, it's a bad memory. But the thing is with the brain, it takes that trauma and when it finds similarities in the future, when you go through life, it finds similar things and it starts to, you know, categorize that into context. And the context becomes our reality and that becomes memory. And once that memory is formed, the brain has a context, it reference when you, you know, have a problem. That's what, how you know. That's how you know. That's because you have a memory. Yay. You have a memory now. You know, this is a problem for you. And you try to use some kind of the association talk technique. You make try to make a switch pattern, you make an outcome, you know, outcome. You you want to define something in the future, outcome. So you can go from wherever you are to the outcome and they apply a switch pattern, um, some kind of switch pattern or a negotiation pattern, six set reframing, for example, or some modality work. They may try to make a resource to make an integration, so you, you know, all that stuff. That's, uh, NLP just does this a bit more efficient because they, in the NLP, did study people who did change work, like Milton H. Erickson, Milton. 
he was doing hypnosis. But he was doing it so good, so no one knew what was going on. Because they were hypnotized already. It was too late for them to understand what was going on. So Milton, he did change work, and he was a legend in his own time. And the people from NLP studied him and took what he was doing and made sure other people could learn to do that. But the thing here is all this is just past memory. And the RBIM, we do it differently. Let's say you want to create something funny in your life, in the future. We call this future. You have a dream, a hope, a wish, something like that. But you want to create a future memory in the future about something. Okay? And whatever that might be, it could be that you want to lose weight. You can, you can call it weight. Stop smoking. Habits people do, right? This way, stop smoking, stuff like that. We have things we, you know, might want to do. Uh, we have a habit of some kind. A habit you can change in different ways. There's a good uh, book out there on habits, by the way. You can track and do it yourself. Uh, or you have a trauma. Or you have a, some kind of worry pattern. And basically that's anxiety, panic uh, attack and stuff like that. That's the same pattern. And, or you have fear of some kind. And sometimes people have emotion, emotions, different kinds of emotions. That's what people call a problem space in, in some of All this is memory. All you know, when you know this, it's past memory. And the brain needs to know what kind of context it's interacting with and what kind of response it has to produce. And this is what it does. It knows that by memory. So we don't deal with that. We ask the individual here, okay, what do you want? Well, I want to be happy, for example. Okay. Or they might say, well, you know, I really want to be able to feel confident in, uh, in life when I go to a meeting or something like that. Okay. Or I want to be really uh, passionate about something. Passionate. Oh, yeah. I want to be really inspiring to people. Inspiring. Uh, I will, you know, stuff like this. People, you know, have things in life they really want to do. So we ask, so yeah, I ask them a question. Huh? I ask a question. So... What is it like when your life works for you? That I ask a question like that, and people go like, "Okay, uh, what is it like?" Ooh, I don't know. They say uh, because you know I have this problem stuff. I don't understand that. I don't care about that. I just want to know what it's like for you when you have a future, when it works for you, when you're feeling happy, you're confident, and you're passionate, and inspiring, and you know, uh, it's just wonderful for you. And people go like, well, it could be like this. So you make an image, people say, well, I make an image, all right, okay, uh, or a representation, whatever you call it, doesn't matter, because you somehow have to represent it, right, because, you know, memory is like that. Uh, but as far as you know, this is not, it's not real. You make this, oh yeah, what, what's it like for me? Well, I feel confident, passionate, inside, whatever. But you can't feel it. You not feel it. You don't feel it yet. Not feel it. You have an image representation, you have a memory, but you can't feel it because it's not, you know, you're not associated in, in it. So how do we do that in RBIM then? RBIM. How do we do that? Well, if we focus on the future memory, happy, confident, you know, passionate inside, if we focus on that, the body produce a response, 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 creating space in your body. So 
So your brain in your body produce a response to this future memory. You have a future memory and you're thinking or focus about that memory. Happy, feeling comfort, passionate, and inspiring in the future. Whoa, what was it like when your life works for you in that way? And you go like, well, it would be really wonderful, but you know, it can't be happening because I have all this other stuff going on. I understand that. We don't want to deal with that. We just want to understand what this is like for you. And you focus on that for a while, and when you focus on that, your consciousness, ooh, your sense of self, or consciousness now this is really interesting because when you have a sense of self or your consciousness and you focus on the future memory that you have you have a memory in your of, of when you're happy and inspiring and confident and you focus on that and the body start producing space and you pay attention to this space and you then as an individual, your consciousness drifts slowly towards this memory. Now, it's not much at the start, but when you do this without doing what, what people normally do, is by a comparison. Normally, a comparison is mean that you go back to the old memory and how it is, and to the new one and you go basically back and forth to check did I do this right this is not you don't do that that's not a that's not needed because you just focus on the future memory you focus on the response people or in your in your own case have the response the body produced and the brain produced to this and this is in direct relationship with yourself to this memory and the key here is to be, become aware of the response your body produces space about space. And that space is context. So what happens then is that the context now, the context starts to fall. Because this is content. New memory is content. So the content then and allows your brain to start producing the context and the context then derives into your experience and the experience we're talking about here is happy, feeling confident, passionate, insightful inspiring so what is it like for you when your life works for you? you ask the question, you have a memory that well, my, my life would be, you know I would really happy and feel really confident and you know I would be probably be passionate and inspiring also that really insights uh, you know insight for myself that and the goal like, what happens when you access that and people will have trouble accessing it unless they do this you have your understand that your sense of self or you in this case is consciousness drifting slowly in relationship to this to create this space between and the space you create between uh, it's uh, what actually happens in the brain, I don't know, probably it's some neural net that starts to form. And the, the key here is when you start to focus on that, this, this space here, when you focus on this space that you produce in relationship to this future memory, all this other stuff, the past memory, all that stuff, goes away. It's not access anymore. And since this memory now starts to become uh, dominant, or if you like, uh, or replacing the whole other one. And you haven't done any change work yet. All this is still, you know, true. You haven't changed anything of that. The key here is to understand that when you start to doing and applying the way we do it in RBIM, that the space produced between yourself and the memory is creating a new context and content. And this allows you to build a new pattern in how you create a scenario in your brain or in your life. Now, how fast does it happen? Depends. That's why we also do the drills. We do, uh, as I have a video, on, we do Interflow, for example. If you're advanced, 
Interflow is a good one to experience this space uh, and produce intention or intention you can call also intention call congruency or one option one option one so interflow when we do the handrail when we move our arm handrail we move our arm to access this kind of sensation when the space is opens up when we do this kind of producing intention, focus intention, all that stuff. I also find that most, uh, not all of the people that I'm working with, they can produce uh, a response to the image. And this is going really fast also, by the way. When you produce the experience, this is, this, as soon as you focus on the future memory, this happens. This response and space happens. As soon as you focus on that boom, you go, your brain, you look in, if say, Talking up here, the eye accessing cues. As soon as you look at the image, boom, the body produces the response. Boom, yes. And the space at the same time. But since you want to normal, normally to do the comparison, to go back and check, did I do this right? But if you understand that you need to pay attention to the, uh, the response in space and let that happen for a while, uh, and ask the question, what's it like for you when you like working? When you ask that kind of question, your brain goes into that kind of future reference and, oh yeah, it would be really happen. Feel confident and the passion on the inside. And you can have that if you pay attention to the response to space that opens up then. And the space that opens up is that your sense of self drifts or creates space in between those. And if you do that for a few minutes, that will help you uh, uh, sense. And I recommend for people when they do this and experience this, to do that in a way that every day uh, means morning, afternoon, lunch, I don't know, or night, every day and night, to do the drill, ask a question, do the drill, ask the question, do the drill again. And if you're not aware of the sense of self drifting towards the consciousness, and the response in the space and opens up. Uh, this helps if you do this for a few days because you're focusing your brain on the same thing and everybody knows that. If you focus on something, sooner or later you will start to understand it, even though if you don't. Because we want we don't want people to do the comparison, obviously. That's not we don't want that to happen because if you do that, you're going to miss out of the experience. Because then you try to go back into the old one or understand the process and stuff like that. And that makes this really hard to do that. So the key point here is define what you want to be in the future. When you're happy or feel confident or passionate, insightful, or inspiring, whatever you call it. Ask a question. So what's it like for me when my life is working for me in this kind of you know context or in the future? Well, you know, I will be... And you focus on that. So we focus, focus on that, focus, focus on that, memory and response, and the image response, and we focus on that. We find our sense of self, this all this makes sense, then drifts, we drift, our sense of self drifts to this space. And you will probably find when you do this that you want to, to check back. And uh, if you if you if you do that, stop what you were doing. Do this again. Do this again until you're not doing that. Until you're not doing the comparison. And if you do that, you will find the sense of self have a, a new wonderful experience. And you haven't done any change work. Basically, you just explore a new memory, and you can have a new experience. You can also try to do it the open way, obviously, but they have to. When, you sh when you're working with the problem, people must access the problem, or and you have to do a dissociation or something like that to overlap from wherever you are to the new. And you have to change the uh, block or change or uh, make sure the old one is not interfering with uh, whatever it is. But that's all technology. Uh, you don't need to do this yet. Because when you understand that the memory is what the brain is doing, so when you wake up in the morning, for example, and you go like, you know, 
and you feel a, the first thing what happens is you feel a great experience. You have you are happy, feeling confident, you feel passionate, you feel you know inspiring. This is a new, really great day. You, so this is what it's like for me when I'm having this kind of like oh cool. And if you like wake up like that, uh, whatever has been going on previously won't happen because you have a new memory. This is how it's like it. How it's like it. This is how you create reality. By the way, this is how the brain creates reality. Unless we, we engage the comparison mode. And we don't want to do that, obviously, for several reasons. Because we want to have a clean access to the desired memory, the future. Have uh, that memory. Uh, this will happen as a result. New memory. And the space access. So your sense of self or consciousness is now identified is now identified with the new memory. The new memory and you becomes the same thing. So you write your address here, if you like, and post the mail. So the new memory and the space and access you use, and uh, elicit if you like, uh, if you're talking technical terms, but your sense of self has drifted into this new memory, so it produces a new consciousness or experience if you like, so you can say experience also, this, all, this produces experience, oh cool, I have a new experience, yay! And you have the new experience, and your sense of self then is the new memory. So your new sense of self and all that stuff is the new memory. And people sometimes get confused by that because they don't understand. After a while, this if you keep doing this kind of experience, sooner or later, uh, different things, when you interact with the environment, friends, family, home, stuff like that, so you have this new experience going on. And when you start to interact with all these new things outside in your life, sooner or later, since you're keeping this as a reference, as a memory, as this is you, who you are, then all these other contexts you're interacting with will respond to this new form experience you have created. So that means when you're interacting with uh, family, for example, or work, or friends, or strangers, all those becomes for you this new reference point as, as an experience that becomes your newfound reality in many ways. We can, we can define it uh, differently, we can talk about it differently, but in essence it's a new reality. And it works because we don't engage in comparison mode. And since we don't engage in comparison mode, this will work just fine for you to create a new uh, decision making. This creates new decisions also. And uh, when you get a suggestion or idea from someone, you can, because you have your experience, you can choose easier. You can have an easier way of living your life. So I'll repeat back. Uh, NLP or other change technologies uh, working directly with the problem that create uh, issues because you have to make sure they don't get into the uh, bad experience so you they elicit an outcome and this is all based on uh, uh, people who did things in change for like Milton Erickson who's doing hypnosis stuff like that so and then you apply a change pattern depending on the outcome and where you are today there's a either a switch pattern or negotiation, some kind of your unconscious or whatever, or some overlap to make an integration with, you know, all that stuff to elicit the reasons and all that, and then try to, you know, integrate that. And that's fine, but all this is basically dealing with past memory. And uh, that's one way of doing it. I don't recommend it for many reasons. What RBIM does is to create a new future memory 
we can have this all this kind of we know that uh, we have a habit we have a trauma we have a boring we have fear we have emotions we have things we want to do we want to stop uh, smoking we, we want to lose weight stuff like that right so we ask people okay the future memory is consistent of being happy feeling confident passionate and you know inspiring and when I am that, I'm in my future memory, that would be really cool. So what's it like for me when my life works for me? Oh, well, then I have this memory. And when we focus on that memory, we can call it an image or representation, whatever you want. When we focus on that, the body and brain produce a response. That happens to be space. And it's contained in the body. And once you start to feel that and sense that response, sensation, which is... You have your sense of self is drifting towards this future memory since you know this is going on. There's no reason to uh, fear or being scared or something like that because all this is going to happen in the comparison in that case. We don't want you to do that. We want you to focus on the memory, focus on the response the body's making, the brain makes to that. Uh, explore how this works for you. You find out drifting to this kind of future memory produces a new different experience and you have like, oh, I'm feeling happy now. And, uh, and this creates for you uh, a new identification, a new way of experiencing life. So you have uh, new ways of dealing with everything in your personal private life and workplace and friends, family. This creates a new reality for you because you have new memory, space access, and a new sense of self and your consciousness have expanded because you can run your own experience through the day.